Greetings to all participants. I will present my experience with MFA-based DLTS system. I will also, uh, okay, I can start my video so you can see me. I will also try to answer the questions if there are, uh, if there are uh, questions, if there are some features that make such system special. Uh, my talk will consist of listed topics. In the, this talk today, Piotr gave a very nice introduction to the DLTS method itself. So I will only briefly describe our MFA-based system in the first part. After that, I will compare the results of DLTS measurements of the same sample obtained on our MFA-based setup uh, to the results from commercial HERA DLTS setup. This will be followed by explanations and discussion. Uh, we will show advantages of MFA-based system. Brief summary will follow at the end. So let's start with implementation of our system. Here are presented images of our MFA-based system and commercial uh, HERA DLTS system. For an MFA-based DLTS system, besides MFA itself, one needs only a PC, thermal regulator with cryostat and sample holder. By volume, uh, it takes one fifth of the volume necessary for the HERA system. So the first advantage we can state right away, if you have small space in your lab, MFA-based uh, system should be your choice. However, that's uh, not the only advantage. Uh, as it was nicely presented by Ron today, one can observe capacitance transients. He did not come to this last point, but uh, here I show you this uh, point. Um, and you see uh, that uh, at 95, there is a transient of capacitance, and at 150K, there is no transient. And uh, uh, before the uh, actual DLTS spectrum measurements, we just recommend choosing all MFA settings like biasing, timing, frequency, and so on from the user interface. Then these parameters can be inputted in, in the measurement program, a separate measurement program, uh, which is necessary for temperature management, recording a data file, and automation of the whole measurement routine. Uh, this slide just shows connections, uh, measurement routine, and data processing for the whole DLTS measurement process. At the uh, start, we used information and soft that was kindly provided by Professor Eduard Monachov from University of Oslo, Norway. One can also find useful tips um, in the listed uh, here publications. Uh, I will be glad to give further details about these topics if there will be questions from the um, audience. This slide shows the user interface of our DLTS measurement program designed in LabVIEW. Here we uh, input necessary measurement parameters and monitor the measurement process. Now let's look at some results obtained on our DLTS system. We started by comparing measurement results from MFA-based system to well-established HERA DLTS system. This system is commercially available, um, and uh, we just uh, bought one uh, such system uh, recently. This slide shows DLTS spectra registered by MFA and uh, HERA system on the very same uh, sample. The details of the sample is presented here. It, it was a um, uh, FZ silicon sample doped with gold. Uh, uh, so in both cases, uh, we see uh, two signals. The low temperature signal, which belongs to gold donor in P-type uh, silicon, and a uh, high temperature signal here. The spectra are presented for similar rate windows. The results of a standard procedure of DLTS peak evaluation are presented on the next slide. The figure shows an Arrhenius plots for both traps and both systems. 
data for the gold donor closely coincides. You see that Arrhenius uh, plots are very similar. The, sum the summarizing table also shows a very good coincidence of trap signatures and defect concentrations between the system and the published and expected data. Uh, for the higher temperature peak, which apparently originates from DH, DH6 center of reconstructing locations, the data points differ between uh, MPA and HERA. From the table, we see a good coincidence between the published data for DH6 center and HERA results. Actually, that was the first reason to ascribe detected signal to dislocations. However, both of these differ from the results of MPA measurements. We will try to explain the reason for the difference. To clarify what is uh, different with MPA measurements for the DH6 uh, traps, let's look on transients at various temperatures and settings. The slide presents recorded capacitance transients directly detected by MPA at various temperatures for various settings of MPA system. We varied the maximal bandwidth, uh, which is uh, the reverse value of the time constant and the delay time. The sampling rate parameter followed the bandwidth. One can see that for the temperature range 130, 180 K, in all cases, transients have the same amplitude. But there is a huge difference for the 200 to 180K range where the transients related to the second trap was detected. The variety of DLTS spectra obtained after processing the transients for various settings are presented in this table. Here are much more settings than in, in, in previous slide. For all cases, the gold-related trap gives a very similar peak in temperature position and intensity but um, the DH6 peak changes from a situation where it's barely detected, for example here, to that where uh, that signal is prevailing in the spectra. The spectra detected by the HERA system, for example, can be closely repeated on MPA with settings of bad width, uh, of 27 kilohertz and delay time of one millisecond. It's not shown here. Power spectra processing gives ideally the same parameters for gold-related signals for all settings. I look at this uh, coincidence and nice Arrhenius plot. Uh, variation of system parameters produces different uh, signatures for the uh, six defect. However, uh, for 54 um, kilohertz and 107 kilohertz bandwidth and the shortest delay time, the trap signatures are, are the same. Let's look at the initial portion of the transients, especially since the MPA system easily allows one to register this segment. In the capacitance bridge based DLTS systems, this segment cannot be observed. Details uh, of a transient for two temperatures are presented in this slide. In each of these figures, the end of the filling pulse and subsequent transients are presented for various settings of bandwidth. The sampling rates again follow bandwidth values. For the plots on the left, the y scale is enlarged at start of a transient. The time scales here are logarithmic. On the right plots, symbols are shown. The symbols represent each sampling point registered by MPA. Time scales are linear and significantly enlarged. If now we will compare uh, these two temperatures, it's obvious that at 20, the, um, uh, 250K delay time of one, two milliseconds, that is usual for standard DLTS systems, will significantly suppress the signal independently from bandwidth values. However, for 155K, 
such a delay time will not lead to noticeable distortions. Let's look on delay time for uh, MVA more carefully. The figure on the left presents details of the edge segment for 107 kilohertz bandwidth right at 155K. Symbols represent experimental sampling, uh, sampling points. The measurement error is half of the sampling duration. The arrow shows the necessary delay time for these settings. And as you see, it's uh, 35, 40 microseconds. And the right figure presents dependencies of necessary delay time for various bandwidth values. The difference between the measurements on 155K and 250K is interesting. This may be related to the difference in the filling kinetics for the DH6 center. Um, if I still have time, I think I have. Um, I will give you another example where the MVA system shows advanced possibilities. Uh, we performed measurements of the dependence of the DLTS peak amplitudes on the duration of the filling pulse. Such a dependence helps to separate point defects from extended, since the filling kinexis for them is different. For this task, we need to use an additional pulse generator for filling pulses less than one millisecond. MVA gives possibility to go down to one millisecond, but for shorter pulses, we need uh, such a generator. We used K side pulse generator. From the same uh, gold uh, doped silicon sample, we detected capacitance transients at 180K for various filling uh, pulse lengths. At this temperature, uh, the transients from both traps are present. So you can see this part. Uh, and this part are just from different, uh, different peaks here. Uh, the curves can be fitted by a combined function with a fixed time constants. After the fitting, the dependence of amplitude parameters on the filling pulse duration, they are analyzed. The results are shown on the graph. So seven orders of magnitude uh, uh, changes in filling uh, duration, f f filling pulse duration, results in fast saturation of a gold donor. This is characteristic uh, for so-called point-like defects. The dependence can be well fitted using expressions shown on the right. For DH6 trap, uh, the reported dependence for the extended defects was observed uh, in, in the range from um, in microseconds onward. However, for shorter pulses, uh, the dependence looks different and was not reported previously to our knowledge. Investigation of this part may provide additional information on the uh, properties of the defects. So let me briefly summarize now. One can set up a DLTS system from scratch using MVA from Zurich Instruments in a couple of months. Above all, the system is very in, uh, instructive with powerful interface and a lot of possibilities. It even can be used to teach DLTS to students. This is uh, quite difficult, believe me, with, with our uh, DLTS systems. Uh, the system allows measurements shortly after the filling pulse, minimizing uh, the delay time used in the standard DLTS uh, setups from 1 2 milliseconds to 40 80 microseconds. The short delay time opens new possibilities for accurate measurement of trap signatures for defects with a strong temperature dependence of the carrier capture cross section and defects uh, with extended structure. Uh, new possibilities and higher uh, precision can be achieved also for various types of transient measurements and evaluation, like measurements of dependence of filling, uh, pulse duration, and so on. With this, finally, I would like to acknowledge the help from Professor Monachov at the start of the MVA system construction. Thanks are due to Katrin Quast, 
for supplying interesting samples. The nice team from Zurich Instruments helped and supported us a lot. Finally, I would like to thank my colleagues from the Berg Academia Freiberg for their help and support. The materials related to this study can be found on my page in ResearchGate and slides uh, from this seminar will also be uploaded there. And of course, thank you for your attention.